I'm continuing this series on the nine stages of ego development, and today I'm covering the individualist ego stage, four or five. This is the first stage that's actually post-conventional. In other words, it's the first ego stage that's not mostly influenced by culture. Do you know anyone personally who lives their life in such a way that they're mostly disconnected from the culture? Well, they could be an individualist, or maybe they fit into one of the other three stages that are also post-conventional. I'll cover some background and summarize the stages I've already talked about. And while you're listening to the characteristics of the individualist, I want you to think about what public figure you're reminded of. And then at the end of the session, I'll let you know who came to mind for me. I'll give you a hint and some clues along the way. This person is a well-known spiritual leader who became popular after Oprah promoted their book in the early 2000s. Let's start with some background. The ego development theory was pioneered by Jane Lovinger in 1976 and then further developed by Susan Cook Greuter. Today, there are nine stages in all, and they're divided into five conventional stages and four post-conventional stages. Now, conventional stages in this context means that these first five stages were mostly culturally influenced. In other words, how you make sense of the world, where you get meaning from, has mostly to do with where you grew up and who and what influenced you. Now, the rest of the four stages, the post-conventional ones, beginning with the individualist ego stage I'm talking about today, are different. It's in these stages that we realize our meaning depends on us, our own personal perspective and interpretation of things, and not so much on what we're taught by our cultures as meaningful. This is the first stage of ego, if we ever make it, and most of us won't, where we will begin to experience true freedom from our cultures. My name is Johanna, and if you're new here, I create content to help you live by your heart. And by this, I mean I want you to live with more freedom, control, and clarity in your life. Instead of being driven by the unconscious fears, limited beliefs, and confusion we have when we make the linear mind our master. I'll spend just a moment on each of the three earlier stages. Recall that we have the diplomat stage. It began as early as age 12, and one third of adults are in this stage today. Now this is the ego stage, where we assigned meaning to the groups we belong to. Remember this one? And those groups gave us our identity as a diplomat. If we made it through the diplomat stage, then we moved on to the expert stage. And this is where another one third of adults live today. So think about this. Over half of the people you meet today are either in the diplomat or the expert ego stages. Think of the expert stage as the one you may have found yourself in after college or uni, when you thought you knew everything, your way it was always the best way, and everyone else seemed like competition because you were constantly comparing yourself to others. You recognized yourself as unique and your identity was made up only of just how unique and just how special you thought you were. Now, if this sounds a bit narcissistic to you, it just may be. But remember, according to ego development theory, it's not possible to skip any of these stages. And finally, there's the achiever stage. This is the last of the socially programmed conventional stages. And most of us don't even make it to this stage. Remember the, the achiever, is the one where our meaning is focused on leaving a legacy or some lasting change. So we spend most of our time and energy seeking to improve our communities. That brings us up to the individualist ego stage. 
At this stage, we realize things aren't quite what they seem to be at earlier stages. It's kind of like when you look back at your earlier self and you wonder, what was I thinking at that time? Why did I make those decisions? Then hopefully you can remember how differently you saw the world around you. And what you thought was so important at the time just isn't so important to you now. And maybe you've had this thought that if only you could go back, knowing what you know now or who you are now, you would have done things much, much differently in your past. This is how the individualist feels about the previous stage they were in. In the achiever stage, they worked hard to leave a legacy and improve things in their community. They felt this sense of duty to achieve their goals. And now, as an individualist, they're preoccupied with a desire for unique personal accomplishments, independent of any socially approved roles. Who cares what society thinks, what they approve of? In a sense, they can withdraw from external affairs or even the companies they work for and turn inward, searching for their unique gifts or just chasing their own burning questions. And due to this new introspection they have, they can often provide unique approaches to problems or even inspire others through their own enthusiasm in pursuing their own interests. And the shift from conventional to post-conventional stages reflects a move from the linear intellectual mind to a more embodied awareness. Individuals are looking for meaningful connections as to what's going on in their life. And these clues come from sources that were previously dismissed with skepticism because they're not of interest to the linear mind. And these are things like physical body sensations, intuition, paying attention to dream symbols, imagination and meditation, all experiences that are easily dismissed by the rational linear mind. Individualists have a fourth person perspective, and this allows them to examine beliefs more objectively without being so attached to them. So they begin to question how they came to believe what they believe and how one knows things. They realize things aren't what they seemed earlier because reality and truth depends on circumstances. And they realize that the ego stages that they were in before were socially and culturally conditioned. So their own sense of certainty about things and their judgmental mindsets break down. They can now examine their beliefs in order to test their assumptions. Now for many of us, questioning our beliefs feels threatening, but for the individualists, they enjoy it. It's a new mental freedom they've never had before, and their inner world is full of interest. They realize that the same things can have different meanings for different people. The same experience means something different for your neighbor or your spouse than it does for you. They also realize that meaning can change over time for the same person. Because the individualist has seen this in their own life, and they're no longer driven by society and culture. Their eyes are opened, and they can see that this must be the same for everyone else. In this ego stage, others' opinions have a truth and a value from where they stand. So for them, science can no longer explain everything. And if they ever held a belief that truth is eventually found in science. They no longer believe this. Individualists are often concerned with making a unique and personal contribution to the world, regardless of any socially approved roles or tasks. 
part of their work is to discover what that unique purpose might be. And from a fourth person perspective, the individualist can become fascinated watching themselves try to make sense of themselves. Pure rational analysis is abandoned and they don't feel the need to explain everything to everyone. They can live how they want without a need to prove everything first. They often have a sense of humor directed at themselves, which is based on an insight into the pointlessness of meaning making. And rather than analyze everything, individualists want to enjoy the subjective experience of life. So there's a shift from doing and accomplishing to being and feeling. They become now oriented. They notice how their feelings affect the body and vice versa and how feelings are diffused throughout the body. There's a new sense of body-mind connection. And if you're familiar with spiral dynamics, this is stage green. Individualists turn their focus from future goals to a fascination with the present. Hint, hint, what spiritual leader does this make you think of? Picture the hippie culture in the individualist sense of freedom and self-expression. Individualists don't want to impose and push their views onto others. They seek to respect and understand them. And individual differences are celebrated and they're paid attention to in a way that those in the previous ego stages, especially the achiever, just don't understand. When individualists are in social groups, everyone in the room can express their opinion. Now the extreme view of this is to claim that there is no position to judge anything, that no one's idea is better than another's. Some turn towards their own meaning making and exploring, exploring their own minds. They're less apt to judge others. Now, why do you think this is the case? This is because you judge others the same way you judge yourself. So if the individualist gives themselves this freedom to live the way they want, it makes sense that they allow the same freedom to others. Now, some people in lower stages will judge the individualist as unethical because of their ability to let others be and do whatever they want. So remind yourself that when you're being judged, it can come from a place of ego. They describe themselves as having many personalities or as an inner tribe, which cannot be readily integrated into a cohesive picture. Sometimes I act, feel, and think one way, other times in another, depending on all sorts of conditions, my mood, how well I've slept, what context I was in. There's a struggle within myself, different voices competing for attention, and all seem real and important parts of me. Who am I? What's going on? How can anyone tell with certainty who they really are as they are changing and growing? So their main anxiety is around integrating different parts of oneself. I can be the old rational self and a new different kind of person. I'm afraid that I'm two or more personalities. I feel confused, split. Any depression an individualist has will center around an inner conflict about never finding one's true self. Because they explore their feelings and their motivations, they also begin to understand and become aware of just how easily one can fool oneself. Because they've already experienced it, they've seen themselves as these cultural puppets before, and this really scares them. The threat of self-deception and 
culturally biased distortion or experiences ever present dangers. So they never feel like they've 100% escaped their former selves, and they really haven't. We can each go into our lower stages of ego given the right circumstances. Any depression an individualist has will have several parts. Number one, there's this fear of being sucked back into the rat race of that achiever mindset by the demands of society. Two, the dread of a routine work life that doesn't allow for expression and creativity. Three, the concern that one will never find and generate a coherent sense of self. And four, the worry and tension that come from growing beyond those conventional mindsets, especially when it comes to intimate relationships. They may feel unappreciated for what they have to offer, and they may, may wish their significant other to become more like them. And this is because they can't yet appreciate the, the gifts of the earlier stages of the ego. On the other hand, their capacity to look within and to introspect leads to a greater ability to empathize with others and to tolerate different ideas, behaviors, and reactions. They're often admired by others, especially by those in advanced post-conventional ego stages, for their carefree, energetic self-expression, their spontaneity, and mostly their ability to live their life according to their own style, freed from restrictive conventions. However, they may also be feared as unpredictable or dismissed as dreamers and non-doers, especially if they're in an achiever environment. Their relationships with others can be intense and mutually rewarding if there is synergy. And when they have to manage others as part of a job, they can be domineering or eccentric to such a degree that others find them impossible to nail down or aloof and unapproachable. Individualists often prefer to live at the edge of society, living exactly the way they want to be. And although they're admired by the post-conventional people, the old school conventional crowd may distrust them for being non-conformist and thus impossible to understand and predict. So, Given what you know now about the individualist and my clues, what spiritual leader did the individualist ego stage remind me of? If you guessed Eckhart Tolle, you were right. His first book was called The Power of Now, which is all about living in the present moment. And as a clue, I named one of the sections Power of Now. So I hope you were paying attention. Either way, let me know what person came to mind for you as an individualist. Take care. Join me next time when I discuss the strategist, ego stage number five.